From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Bob Steele, Eastern Trust. How's New York? Fine, but I haven't found Lorraine Broderick yet. How about your lead? What was his name? Dameron. He hasn't seen her since Christmas Eve a couple of years ago. She walked out on him with 6,500 bucks. Uh, what now? You uh, want to keep on with it, Mr. Steele? Sure, we have to pay her off, even if it is only $1,500. But you sound like this was all the farther you want to go. Uh, it might be at that. Oh, uh, what did you say? Look, a sweet old man left a nice little girl, $1,500. Apparently, I'm looking for a grown woman who isn't very nice anymore. Beside the point, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. Okay, Steele, I'm still on the case. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. Location, New York City, New York. To the Eastern Trust Insurance Company Claims Division, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an account of expenditures during my investigation of the Broderick matter. Subject, Lorraine Broderick. Object... To locate her and pay off claim. Results? Disillusioning. More expenses. Item 9. Three bucks. Cab fare. From the plush offices of William Dameron to a filling station out on Long Island. To check his story of Lorraine's disappearance. A major oil company owned and operated the filling station where Lorraine Broderick had last been seen. Their payroll records named three attendants on duty. Christmas Eve, that is, in 1953. Item 10. $28. More cab fare. And don't squawk about it. I located and interviewed all three. Enclosed fine statement of Edward Quinlan. Sure, I remember that chick. Better looking than this picture, I'll tell you that. She drove in with this old guy, uh, Dameron, you said? Yeah. Well, he hadn't been away from the car 20 seconds before she was out walking down the street as fast as she could, long dress and all. When he come back and asked what had happened to her, I told him. So he went and sat in his car for maybe a couple hours waiting for her to come back. I knew she was gone for good. He knew it too, must have. But he waited. I felt sorry for him. Poor old geezer, even if he did drive a kid. She shouldn't have run out on him like that, Christmas Eve and all. Pauline Dameron Whitfield, sister of William Dameron, living up in Westchester County, verified her brother's story. Lorraine Broderick had left all of her clothes and bags at her house. Mrs. Whitfield had not heard from her or seen her since Christmas Eve, 1953. A check of the luggage revealed no information that would be helpful in locating Lorraine Broderick. The following morning at the New York Police Department downtown, I requested a missing persons investigation on Lorraine Broderick. She was booked in under an alias, Jane Brown. When I got to court, she gave her right name, Lorraine Broderick. What was the charge, Sergeant? Misdemeanor, drunk, disturbing a piece. Twenty-five bucks in night court, April 25th, 1953. Is that the only time she made the blotter? Yep. What's the address, Sergeant? 1346 Yardley. 1346 that's two Yardley, years ago. thanks. At the address on Yardley, I learned that Lorraine Broderick had moved 18 months before. Again, there was no forwarding address, but the landlady turned out to be quite talkative. I'm glad she moved away from here, Mr. Dollar. I'd like to help you find her, but I'm awful glad she moved away. Why do you say that, Mrs. Gaines? Noisy. Parties all the time. I run a quiet place, you know. Yeah, I'm sure you do. When she first come here to rent the apartment, I thought she was the quiet type. Nice. She looked like she was just out of finishing school or something like that. Oh, she couldn't have been more than 20 years old. Well, maybe a little more, 22. She told me she was a secretary and she worked in Manhattan. Well, I let her have the apartment, of course. She paid her rent in advance, in cash. But once she was in, it was a different story. Yeah, yeah. Did did she tell you where she worked in Manhattan? No. No, she never quite got around to mentioning that. Anyway, she couldn't have worked very hard. All the dates she had, night after night, Do you happen to know any of them, Mrs. Gaines? I do not. Big, noisy parties. Well, uh, did she go with any particular man? A smart little girl like that sticking to just one man? I don't know whether she was very smart at all. Was she friendly with anybody in the building? Nope. Any idea where she might have gone from here? Nope. All I can say is I'm glad she don't live here no more. 
I went back to police headquarters. It had occurred to me that hardly anyone is ever arrested for being drunk and disturbing the peace alone. I was right. The night court files revealed that Lorraine Broderick had been arrested with five other people. Three men and two women. I took down their names and began to check them out. Number three down the line was a man named Tyler in the hosiery business. Yes, he remembered Lorraine Broderick very well. No, he hadn't seen her for six months, but he could tell me where she lived. He'd seen her going in and out of an apartment on 61st Street several times. He gave me the address. The boy will take your bag, will he? Yes, sir, may I help you? I'm looking for a Miss Lorraine Broderick. Broderick? Yes. I'm sorry, sir, we have no one by that name registered here. That's funny. I thought at first you were going to say Lorraine Bradley. We had a Mrs. Bradley here at one time. Oh. Did Mrs. Bradley look anything like this picture? Yes, that's Mrs. Bradley. Bradley, huh? How long ago did she move out? Uh, four months ago, anyhow. Do you have her forwarding address? No, sir, I don't. I wish I did. Huh? Mrs. Bradley wrote us a bad check for her rent. We've been trying to locate her. Did you report it to the police? Yes, sir. I understand she's been quite active along those lines. They're looking for her, too. For the third time in one day, I was back at police headquarters, this time inquiring about a Lorraine Bradley. There were five wants on her for passing bad checks. Gave it up about four months ago here in New York, looks like. Then we got a buzzer from Chicago. She was there for a couple of weeks. Wrote about $600 in wallpaper. San Francisco people are looking for her, too. Oh, here's something came in yesterday. Last job in Santa Barbara three days ago. Expense account item 11, $4.05. One long-distance phone call to Mr. Steele at Eastern Trust in Hartford. Using the name Bradley, huh? Yeah, it's probably just a phony. No record of a marriage in New York City to anyone that name. I looked. What's wrong with her, anyhow? I don't know. Well, you better get out to the coast and find out. Item 12, $38, hotel, board, and miscellaneous while in New York City. Item 13, $258.60, New York to Santa Barbara. A little town by the Pacific that impressed me is not caring one thing about the rest of the world. Sun, sea, a pleasantly crowded harbor, some sprawling hotels, two lush green golf courses, and acres and acres of smug, expensive homes. At the police station, a Sergeant Martin was out, so I went over to the harbor inn to meet the latest victim of Lorraine Broderick's talents, a hotel operator named Harrington. Tall, gray-haired, slack, sports shirt, suntan, and sandals. I, uh, I suppose I'm avoiding this business and your questions because I still feel quite chagrined about this whole thing. Pretty understandable, Mr. Harrington. On the face of it, you, you'd think I'd been in the hotel business 30 seconds instead of 30 years, the way she took me. Well, if it's any comfort, she's done the same thing in several cities and as many hotels. <sighs> no comfort, thank you. She was that good, huh? Brother, she was the best. She pranced in here as big as life. Probably didn't have a nickel in the purse. What's more, for the whole four days she was here, she didn't break stride once. Only the best of everything. Uh-huh. I see, she, uh, she gave you a check for $813. Is that right? Painfully right. <laughs> and I took it. No questions. <laughs> Every night in the dining room, she'd order champagne, special dishes... I'd give you some idea of how she carried on. Yeah, I get the idea. I've seen my share of grifters and bad check artists, but she tops them all. Perfume, clothes, luggage, conversation. Can I ask you a question? I'm humiliated already. Go ahead. She checked in here alone, registered as Mrs. Lorraine Bradley, Beverly Hills, right? That's right. Well, now, didn't it strike you as odd that a woman would check in a place like this, a resort hotel, alone, stay four days and uh, meet no one, see no one? You're wrong. She didn't keep to herself. Became friends with at least half a dozen guests in the place. And the way she was throwing my money around, why not? She picked up all the tabs. She threw me off right from the start. Let's talk about that. Start at the top, please. Well, she showed up last Wednesday night in a cab loaded down with luggage. Probably wrote a bad check for that someplace. Probably. She, uh, she came swinging into the lobby with a cabbie following her. Told the night clerk she wanted to see me. When I came down the stairs, she yelled, Harry, ran up, kissed me. Asked me how my wife was. <laughs> you beat that. No. Nope. One of those tricks that your mind plays on you, I suppose. I, uh, I actually thought I did remember her from somewhere. Pretty good. What was her story? Uh, she said she was on her way back from Lake Tahoe. 
Want to rest up. Something about just getting a divorce, being awarded 3000 a month alimony. That impressed me. It would impress anyone, Mr. Harrington. Did she make up any kind of a story about where she'd met you before? No, no, no story. But I got the impression, and of course she saw to it, that she had stopped here before. I wasn't altogether a boob. I, I did check her home address in Beverly Hills. There was a Robert Bradley listed there, same address she gave. Later on, I found out that he's in Europe with his wife and children. But his name was in the book. Oh, yes. Say, so getting back to that part about her being familiar. That's just a good trick on her part, Ella. I did think I'd known her from somewhere, and, well, she also arranged it so that I was too embarrassed to ask her specifically. <laughs> in all honesty, I, I suppose I wanted to have known her. Can you explain that? She was about the most beautiful thing I ever saw. She walked through that door right now and told me none of this was true. I'd probably believe her. Mm -hmm. Do you have a copy of her hotel account? I'd like to look it over. Why? Oh, the phone calls, mostly. Maybe she contacted someone we can trace. Mm -mm. Uh, no phone calls. Here. This check was drawn on a bank in Beverly Hills. Was it personalized? No. <laughs> Maybe I should have thought something of that. Huh? Oh, not particularly. Well, here's this much. I, I can't stand to look it over. It makes me kind of sick. $813. I spent another hour with Mr. Harrington as he distastefully covered the items on the bill she'd paid for with that bad check. Later that afternoon, I met with Sergeant Martin, Santa Barbara Police, who reported that a woman answering Lorraine's description had passed bad checks in Burlingame, Santa Maria, and Ojai, California. Expense account item 14, $102.85. Transportation to Monterey and Santa Cruz, where I interviewed two other hotel managers who had filed complaints. Their stories were pretty much the same as Harrington's, down to the pretended familiarity, the divorce, and alimony details. Item 15, $4.15, long-distance phone call, Steele again in Hartford. That you, Johnny? Yeah, Mr. Steele. I've been hopping around all over the state. Policeman in Santa Barbara called here trying to find you, a Sergeant Martin. He says he's got a line on her. Huh? He's done it again. Hop down to Malibu Beach. The man who runs the seaside inn there found out her check was bad 15 minutes after she left. Now get started. You shouldn't be more than an hour behind her. Mr. Steele, I'm on my way. There'll be another intriguing episode of the Broderick Matter tomorrow. Tomorrow... A long look at what seven years can do to a woman's life. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood, written by John Dawson. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>